Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Kaminsky, for that uh, remarkable survey uh, of the broad activities of the Institute uh, of National Remembrance. Of, of and I'm sure that many people have reserved questions and comments to put to you um, at the end of our session. Um, it's now my pleasure to introduce Dr. Rafael Neskevich, who is the director of the Office for the Present Preservation and Dissemination of Archival Record in the Institute of National Remembrance. Uh, Rafael is also the, and this is of particular interest to me as a professor of Ukrainian studies, he's the leader of the Polish Ukrainian Working Group uh, on the publication of documents relating to. Uh, the relationship of the two countries in the 1930s and 1940s. And just today, I've been the recipient of this remarkable uh, publication of uh, documents, Poland and Ukraine in the 1930s and 1940s, in English translation, uh, an extremely valuable addition to the Monash Library, and one that follows on from the very generous gift to the Monash Library of many publications of the uh, Institute uh, of National Remembrance in 2011. Uh, Dr. Liskevich is the author of the monograph The Military District Court in Poznan from 1946 to 1955, The Organization, Function, and Archival Processes. He's the co-editor of the Handbook of the European Network official authorities in charge of the secret police files in 2013, but he's also the author, co-author, editor of several books, scholarly and popular articles devoted to the question of archives, particularly archives and archival processes concerned with recent Polish history. Um, I therefore now have pleasure in Calling to the floor, Dr. Rafael Miskevich, please welcome him. Services, uh, Polish experience with the archives of the Communist Political uh, Police. Um, you can see on the screen an electronic presentation about uh, documents produced by security services uh, um, uh, in, in some countries in, in East Europe. Uh, together with the collapse of the communist system in Poland, a number of questions arose on how to deal with the documents of the former security services. Uh, there have even be, been suggestions that all those documents uh, should be destroyed uh, so as to sever uh, ourselves from the previous period. Eventually, between 1990 and 2000, uh, the files of the communist security services were kept in the archives of the special services established in democratic Poland. Apart from rare occasions, uh, they were not made available for researchers and no access to the file was provided uh, to the persons whom the documents concerned, for example, persons under surveillance. It was not until 1997, uh, the establishment of the Public Interest Commissioner Office, that the communist uh, documents uh, files started to be used to verify uh, the through of vetting statement made by public persons. In the 90s, files or information uh, from the security archives, um, especially those concerning secret collaboration, collaborations uh, of widely known persons, for example, politicians, uh, journalists, of, uh, and artists, were disclosed through press leaks, uh, triggering sharp disputes and in establishing the Institute of National Remembrance 
Commission for the Prosecution of Crimes Against the Polish Nation by the Act of 18 December 1998. It was the legislature's intention, inter alia, to com compensate the victims of political repressions by the communist special services. Among other forms of comp compensation, um, efforts were made to take, to cart, to punish the perpetrators of communist crimes and to ensure proper condition of access to documents produced by the communist secret services and concerning oppressed persons. During the dozen or so years since the time IPM was established, the regulations governing the administration or more broadly management of the archival archives of communist uh, special services. It seems that the process can be Defined, defined briefly by the expression from rationing to common access. In this area, uh, the Polish state was drawing on the experience for, of other states uh, of the so-called Eastern Bloc and uh, learning lessons from its own experience. Without any doubt, the evolution of the rules of management of uh, the communist uh, documents uh, cannot be considered in isolation from the political situation in which IPN was operating. It should be kept in mind that the act was adopted thanks to a parliamentary majority with which originated from the political opposition movement of the 70s and 80s. For example, Solidarity, election action, uh, Solidarity Elector Action and Freedom Union. Later, in the years 2001-2005, control of the Polish political arena was seized by the post-communist of the Democratic Left Alliance, who didn't curb the Institute's activities, but were not eager to support any changes toward the simplification of the rules of access to documents. The proposal for key regulatory changes related to documents management was placed on the agenda of the Polish Parliament after the 2005 elections, where right-wing groups again came to power, mainly law and justice and the civil platform. Proceedings of the same resulted in a comparative amendment of the Act of the Institute of National Remembrance and the new Act of 18 October 2006 on disclosing information about documents of the state security authorities originating in the years 1944, 1990 and the content of those documents. Both documents entered into force in March 2007 to guarantee common access of the archives of the communist political police. In taking up the description of experience in managing, uh, managing documents produced by communist state security bodies, special attention must be first brought to the legal formula of the institution authorized to keep them. keep them. In other words, the question must be asked about the purpose of which documents of a totalitarian regime can be used in a democratic society. Documents of, of uh, former security services of a totalitarian regime are a specific source. Firstly, it's a very important source which testifies to the functioning of the totalitarian regime in a given country, both in terms of uh, factual history and social political uh, history. Secondly, uh, documents produced by security services provide important evidence in the prosecution of criminals who committed war, Nazi or communist uh, crimes, crimes against humanity, etc. Thirdly, uh, they are an important source of knowledge about the special services themselves. In the case of Institute of National Remembrance, the archival resource of that institution uh, comprised not only documents produced and collected by state security agencies, but also materials produced by common courts and prosecutors' uh, offices, military courts and prosecutors' offices, units of the prison system, etc. Obviously, materials produced by the communist security bodies form the main part of 
documents in total uh, of more than 90 running kilometers of files held in IPN archives recorded by the communist security bodies represent more than 80 percent. The criteria determining uh, what documents uh, should be acquired in the IPN are defined in the act of IPN. We collect documents of state security authorities produced and uh, accumulated in the period of uh, from uh, 22 July 1944 to 30, 31 July 1990, as well by as, as well as by the security bodies of the Third Reich and the Soviet Union concerning Nazi crimes, communist uh, crime, crimes, as well as uh, other uh, felonies constituting crimes against peace, humanity, or uh, war crimes. Uh, in the period from the 1st September 1939 to 21 July 19. The Institute of National Remembrance collects all evidences of other political repressions due to political motives uh, committed by the officers of the Polish prosecuting authorities of judicature or persons acting of the order, as well as other documents uh, related to the activity of the communist political police. The specific nature of the way the communist security services operated consisted in the fact that citizens of the totalitarian state were kept under permanent surveillance. In practice, the security apparatus was interested in all aspects of citizens' individual and group uh, activity. Security officers penetrated private lives, recorded every situation that could be used in future for blackmail. For example, in order to recruit a secret collaborators. Obviously enough, sensitive information concerning sexuality, for example, sexual preferences, social behavior such as addictions, martial betrayal, health condition, or financial standing were most keenly sought by communist police. Sensitive information is contained in many reports and memos. It's recorded in photographs and film taken by security services. For several decades, the documents were virtually inaccessible to the general public. Since the, uh, the establishment of the Institute of National Remembrance, the political police files entered the academic domain and they started to be available to oppressed persons. In 2014, the Institute of National Remembrance celebrates its 14th anniversary. Uh, over those few years, uh, the attitude uh, to documents collected and produced by the former state security bodies uh, has changed uh, substantially. IPN documents have been present in the public debate for several years now. Their content is quoted by historians, uh, columnists, journalists and politicians. The Institute's archives continue to spark um, emotion, although more than 20 years have passed since the collapse of communism. The opponents of opening the archives have argued that on many occasions that files produced by the Polish communist repression bodies are unreliable and present an exaggerated picture of reality. Some claim that very fact that they were produced by the political police uh, disqualifies them as a reliable source of knowledge. Uh, they the point out that there was nothing but fix, especially in the context of documents concerning uh, collaboration with sec security agencies. Uh, in view of such ar argument, uh, it must be made absolutely clear that the documents kept in the archives of Institute of National Remembrance uh, are original and authentic, as they were produced in real time by living persons in connection with specific events. This is not so to say, however, that they contain only true information, of course. It's a rule of researchers, journalists, as well as other people using the archive to verify the facts described. 
In discussing the issue of access of five stages can be identified connected with a series of legislative changes. In general, it should be kept in mind that there, are, there were three regu regulatory frameworks uh, in place regarding the, process, the provision of access to documents at IPN. The initial one from the establishment of the Institute until March 2007, the second one from March 2007 uh, to March 2010, and the prevailing currently. In the first period, documents were made available to persons who were granted the aggrieved party status, or the close persons. In addition to the right to, to inspection documents concerning him, her, uh, the aggrieved party could receive copies of those documents, uh, the right to attach to the set of documents uh, his, her own additions, corrections, updates, documents or the copies, could demand the return of documents kept in the IPN archive, which were the person's property or in his, her possession at the time of loss and could demand that his her own data be made anonym, uh, anonymous and make a restriction to the effect that they are not available for procedures purposes for a period not longer than 90 years from the date of creation of such documents. To a limited extent, IPN archival documents were made available also to scientists but not journalists, employees of, and officers of the state security agencies. In case of officers, the institute was obliged to issue copies of certificates uh, of service or employment and copies of service or work opinion for such officers. Substantial changes in access to document the documents took place after the entry into force of the above-mentioned amendment of the IPN Act on 15 March 2007 and the entry into force of the Act of 18 October 2006 on disclosing information on documents of state security agencies from the years 1944-1990 and the content of, those, of such documents. The right of access to documents accumulated in the institute archives uh, became a fact, in fact a common right. So the provision of both acts extended the group of persons who were granted the right to inspect documents. First of all, aggrieved party status was abolished. Since then, everyone gained the right to inspect documents concerning them. Everyone also meant the persons who collaborated with state security agencies. In this case, materials relating to collaboration were excluded from access. Documents were made available in the form of anonymous copies. Upon, upon submission of a relevant application, the documents were made available in a non-anonymous form. Further on, the Institute issued copies of documents to interest person except uh, documents connected with collaborators, collaborators uh, who had no such right. In addition, everyone was granted the right of access to files of employees and officers of state security agencies, files of public persons and files of vetting proceeding uh, conduct, uh, conclude with uh, legally a valid decision of court. At this point, it is worth adding that the Institute was obliged to publish internet-based catalogs containing information on documents concerning public persons, employees and officers of state security uh, agencies, members of, a, uh, of the party nomenclatura, and oppressed persons. Only in the case of those last mentioned, con uh, consent is required for a publication of personal data together with information of the files preserved. The other three categories are published automatically without asking those concerned for consent. Employees and officers of state security agencies 
have a right uh, to apply to IPN for copies of personal documents concerning them. The amendment, uh, IPN Act, also com uh, confirmed the right to access to archive records uh, for public authorities and other institutions, organizations, and persons performing their, uh, their statutory task and conducting academic research. <coughs> access to archive records was also granted to journalists. Owing to the statutory changes, uh, the process making archive of uh, records available became more efficient and the waiting time for files ordered, ordered was reduced to several days. Another significant amendment of the Act of the Institute of National Remembrance was made by the Act of 18th March 2010, amending the Act uh, of the Institute of National Remembrance, an Act on Disclosing Information on Documents of uh, State Security Agencies um, from the years 1944-1990 and the content of such documents. According to the Act, researchers and journalists have been given the right to receive, on request, information from data sets, registers, and files of state security agencies, including those concerning the, 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 the identi identity of secret informers or assistants in acquiring operational information. In the recent amendment of the IPN Act, the president of the Institute of National Remembrance was obliged to prepare and publish an uh, inventory describing the entire archival resource down to archival items. This inventory is published in electronic version on our official website. Uh, the policy of open access uh, to the archives of the Communist Security Services is closely connected with activity aimed to identify and delimit the errors which are still classified uh, as a state secret. In taking up measures involving the, the classification of the documents of the former state security agencies, it was necessary to change the existing rules which provided a new definition of what is and what is not state secret. This was necessary because all knowledge about the archives of the former regime was hidden behind the curtain of the Communist Act on the Protection of State, um, of state and Cooperate Secrets of 1982, which uh, effectively blocked the process of provision of access to information. Major qualitative changes took place after the entry into force the Act of 22 January 1999 on the protection of non-public information. The Act entered into force virtually uh, uh, simultaneously with the establishment of the Institute of National Remembrance. Uh, the, the arrangements uh, adopted in the Act uh, have a very strong impact on the process of declassification and provisions of access to documents from the IPN archives. The Act on the Protection of Non-Public Information of 1999 made it for 36 months of existing the existing protection classes of document for documents produced until 10 May 1990. This is the date of the establishment of the information of the Office for State Protection in Democratic Poland. During that period, uh, the offices and institutions holding information were obliged to verify the status of the information and adjust to, to the guidance contained in the, uh, in, the, in the Act. In terms of information collected by the former repression apparatus, those criteria marked a breakthrough. The Act stipulated that irrespective of the pass passage of time, protection under the strictly confidential class was said to apply only to data identifying the persons supplying information as a part of operational activities to agencies, institutions, and services operating under the Act. The problem was that the first Act on the Special Services after the Second World War in Poland was the Communist Act of 14 July 1983. 
on the Office of Minister of Internal Affairs and the terms of uh, reference of bodies reporting to him. Therefore, the data of against the, of the Communist Security Services appearing in documents after July 1983 were protected. This caused serious complications. As before access was granted, each file had to undergo a through examination and the relevant protection class or the identification of content as uh, non confidential has to be marked on the cover. However, that didn't prevent the access for individual citizens to files created on them by security agencies. According to the interpretation of the IPN Act, it was possible to inspect materials produced by the repression apparatus even where information was classified as non-public. However, materials were not available for residuals. To sum up, between 2000 and 2005, the possibilities of making information on the repression apparatus available in public were considered, constrained by the effect of the year 1983. Access to information produced after the, the date was possible only in those cases in which no agents of the communist security agencies were involved. Significant, significant changes regarding the classification of documents took place in June 2005 as a result of the amendment of, of the above mentioned act, the protection of public information. At that point, uh, the uh, artificial Barrier of 1983 disappeared. In summer of 2010, the Parliament adopted a new act on the protection of non public information. It entered into force at the beginning of 2011. Under the new act on legal protection applied to data which were deemed public by virtue uh, of the law contained in documents data sets, register and records, as well as files of officers and soldiers of state security agencies, which were subject to the obligation to transfer to the Institute of National Remembrance under the provision, uh, provisions of the Act of 18 December 1989 and the Act uh, of 18 October 2006, uh, produced in the case, uh, in the case of state civilian security, security agencies until 31 July 1990 and for military services until 31 December 1990. Irrespective of the above regulation, general procedures not, don't apply to, docu to documents kept in a dedicated secret set. When IPN was established, the legislature assumed that the institute's archives would also receive documents the disclosure of which would be dangerous for a currently functioning state. Therefore, a dedicated set was established in the IPN archive. Uh, it contains selected files of the communist special services to which no access is allowed except for uh, designed IPN employees and the present special services. However, this restriction doesn't apply to public prosecutors and, the pre and uh, conducting investigations uh, into communist crimes, prosecutors uh, in charge of vetting public persons uh, and cards giving judgments uh, in those cases. Once every three years, reviews of documents are undertaken with uh, regard to the need to maintain their special classification. If the president of the Institute of National Remembrance and special services conclude that the grounds of maintaining such a classification no longer exist, the files become public. Owing to this arrangement, a single archive holds potentially all documents of the former communist secrets. On the other hand, there is no risk that data of uh, significance of the security of the state will be disclosed. During its 11 years of existence, the number of non-public documents held IPN's restricted set has been reduced from several kilometers to several hundred running meters, about 400 meters. 
So, uh, Polish experience with the docu communist political police documents in general date back 24 years when the legacy of files of the previous regime was put in the possession of the new special services appointed by the democratic authorities. Before the appointment of the Institute of National Remembrance, those files were incidentally becoming the source of larger or smaller political tension. The most famous was recalled, uh, the recall of the government of the Prime Minister Janusz in June 1992, when he decided to publicly announce the information about the information preserved in archives concerning the, the cooperation of Polish deputies, senators and the representatives of the government with the communist security services. Within two decades of Polish independence, we have gotten accustomed uh, to the legacy of the files of the communist political police. Researchers and journalists are more efficiently using the documents describing the facts in a better way. Currently, information revealing that someone well-known collaborated with the secret security um, police less and less often raises political and social emotions. Uh, the documents of the former security police are still present in public life, as they, despite everything or against anything, uh, constitute a national treasure. Uh, they are a kind of a bridge between the past and the present, which uh, simultaneously build foundations for future generations in Poland. Thank you very much for your attention.